In this video, we're going to take a look at how to model uh, binary junction transistors with uh, controlled sources. So what we have here is a current controlled uh, current source. The input is I1 and the output is going to be beta times I1, where beta typically is a number in the range of about 10 to 200. And the transistor just acts as an amplifier of the current from the input to the current to the output. So now the way we draw a transistor then is um, we have the typical diagram here of the transistor with a base, a collector, and an emitter. This would be an NPN binary junction transistor. And we show it in this way here when it is in active mode. So in active mode, the current IB that flows into the base gets multiplied by this factor beta and becomes the current that flows between the collector and the emitter. The transistor also has a cutoff mode and a saturation mode. That's the digital modes of the transistor. In the cutoff mode, there is no current flowing at the base. And basically, the base emitter voltage is less than 0.7 volts and the transistor acts like an open switch. If we, on the other hand, put in enough base current so that we reach the 0.7 volts and perhaps even a little bit more, then the collector emitter voltage becomes smaller and smaller and in the end uh, it's approximately uh, 0.2 volts, and we say that the transistor is in saturation, which means that it acts like a closed switch. Okay, similar things happen for a PNP transistor, but everything gets reversed, uh, emitter, collector, and base. Uh, the polarities get reversed, and um, the way it has been drawn here is that the emitter goes to the top, the collector to the bottom, so that the current flow is in the same direction as it was for the NPN transistor. And the same thing we can do here, we can have the transistor an open circuit, and then it is in cutoff mode, or we can have it in um, saturation mode, and then it acts like a closed uh, switch. There are uh, three major types of circuit that people do with transistors and they are named based on which of the terminals is connected to ground. So in this particular case we have the emitter connected to ground and so it is called a common emitter circuit. To analyze this circuit we, as a first thing, we draw the equivalent circuit over here using the current controlled current source. We model the base emitter voltage across the uh, base emitter PN junction with a voltage source. We typically assume that this is 0.7 volts. And this allows us, using KVL, to actually compute what the uh, current is. We go around this way for KVL. And so we have minus Vs plus V1, which is the voltage across this resistor here, plus VBE, 0.7 volts. And then there's ground over here, so that's the equation that we wrote down here. And using Ohm's law, we know that V1 is equal to Rb times Ib. So that's the voltage drop across here. And so we can compute Ib as V1 over Rb. And um, looking at uh, the KVL equation again up here, 
we find that this is equal to Vs minus Vbe over Rb. Okay, once we know what Ib is, then we use the current controlled current source to uh, compute what the current is through the, uh, the through the collector, and that gives us a voltage drop across our RC. So we get Vc is equal to Vcc minus beta times RC times Ib, where beta times Ib comes from the current controlled current source. And we can take a look at the voltage gain of this particular configuration. So we can take dVc, dVs, so we take the derivative of Vc with respect to Vs, and that makes the Vbe drop out, and we get minus beta times Rc over Rb. Okay, so it's the, the gain is essentially determined by this uh, resistor here, the ratio of this resistor over this resistor, and times the parameter beta of the transistor. If the collector is uh, connected directly to the positive voltage source, then we talk about the common collector circuit, as is shown here. So now we have RB and RE, but no resistance there at the collector terminal. And in this case, we again use KVL as a starting point, so we go around the loop here. Of course, we first make the equivalent circuit so that we can actually meaningfully talk about doing things like KVL. Okay, so KVL tells us that we have minus Vs plus V1 plus Vbe plus Ve. So we assume that there is a plus here and there is a minus down here, like this. That must be equal to zero. Then we also know that V1 is equal to Rb times Ib, just like in the common emitter circuit. But now we have a slight problem. We don't actually know exactly what Ve is because that depend depends on Ib. We can write that Ve is equal to beta plus 1 times Ib times Re. The beta plus 1 times Ib comes from the current that um, goes down here, which is beta times Ib, plus the current that comes in from here, which is Ib. And so all together we get in this branch here, uh, this beta times Ib, and here is Ib. Okay, so all together we get here beta plus 1 times Ib. So now we can in the KVL equation, we can replace Vs. Uh, actually, no Vs, we take over to the other side and uh, minus Vbe, but then V1 gets replaced by Rb times Ib, and uh, Ve gets replaced by beta plus 1 times Re times Ib, so that's this quantity here. And now we can solve for Ib. And once we know what Ib is, we can go back into this equation here and compute the actual value of um, Ve. So the voltage gain in this particular case would be dVe, dVs, as shown down here. So we take the derivative of this expression with respect to Vs. And we're left with beta plus 1 times Re over Rb plus beta plus 1 times Re. So as beta uh, becomes large, this actually goes to 1. If beta is small, then there, there will be a gain, a voltage gain that's less than 1. So this voltage gain here is typically going to be less or equal to 1. Okay, here's a little example uh, of a circuit in um, LT spice. We use a base resistor of 10 kilo ohms, a collector resistor of 1 kilo ohm, and a VCC voltage of 12 volts over here. The input voltage is at 1 volt and it gets tapped um, through this command here. It gets tapped 
uh, from minus 0.2 volts to plus 2.2 volts in increments of 0.01 volts. So that we get to see how the transistor reacts depending on different input voltages which create different input currents. Okay, so here is the picture that we get for that. We have to the left a cutoff region where the voltage um, down here, so this, this is the source voltage that we apply over here. So as long as the source voltage is significantly below 0.7 volts, there is no current, no base current flowing. So we have here the, the base current, IB. And over on this side here, IB is approximately zero. And so the transistor is actually cut off. And uh, this is the curve here for the IB. And if it's cut off, that means that there is no current flowing uh, through the collect from the collector to the emitter. And that means that there is no voltage drop across this RC. And we stay at VC up here. So the red line up here, that's the output uh, that we get over here. And then as the base voltage or the source voltage and then through the resistor the base voltage uh, goes to 0.7 volts and uh, rises above that the current starts increasing so we get now the increase here in the base current that goes up like this and that through the current control current source that's inside here that increases the current that goes through the collector and um, as that current increases, the voltage drop across RC becomes larger. And uh, we start at VCC and then go down here. Okay, we start at VCC, we go down here, and then at some point in time, we are down to zero and we cannot go any further. And that is the saturation region. That's when the transistor acts like a closed switch. Okay, so. Here in between, we have a region which is called active region, where the transistor is essentially, um, the input-output function of the transistor is essentially linear. To the left, we have the situation where the transistor acts like an open circuit or an open switch. And to the right, we have the situation where we go into saturation and the transistor acts like a closed switch. Okay, finally, uh, just a quick look at what something more complicated would look like. Uh, this is the audio LM386 audio amplifier that you have been using in the lab. And uh, here are the pin numbers, like 2 and 3 are the two inputs. So this together with this are the input stages. And then as we go over to the um, right hand side over here this is the output stage and some of the things to note here is that um, some transistors in here like those are PNP and others like for example this one down here are NPN transistors Okay, so in general, when people build integrated circuits using transistors, they will use both PNP and NPN transistors.